Okay, this is the next step in the um, canvas collage that I'm going to use those painted fabrics on that I did in the last couple of videos. And this is the canvas, which I've kind of messed with. It's got some blobs of paint on it that weren't there before. Um, it was just really pastel -y. It's got fabric and lace and paper and paint and just all kinds of stuff on it. Very textural. And I'm going to um, make it even more textural with those fabric pieces that I painted the other day. And I apologize if this angle is really weird. This canvas measures 40 inches by 50 inches, so it's big. <laughs> and this is the best I could do to get at least most of it in the frame without getting myself in the frame. Because I haven't had a shower or anything. I'm like rolled out of bed and came out here, and it's scary. And, and I don't really want to frighten anyone with that this morning. So um, I'm just going to do the best I can here. What I'm going to do first, before I put the fabric down, is I'm going to paint the edges. <gasps> oh, I forgot my silicone glove. No! Okay, hang on. I have to go um, protect my delicate little hands. Okay, so I am going to just paint the edges. Because I am not sure if I'm going to, you know, the fabric's going to overlap the edges. Or what? <laughs> Clearly, I'm not sure what I'm doing. But, um, okay, this is not good. I just dropped a blob of blue paint on my patio of the house that I don't own. Alright, let me, um, let me stop and put something down here like a grown up would have done to begin with. So hang on. Okay, got that done. That was awkward. <laughs> so I just did it off camera. <laughs> but I just <laughs> went around the edges with my paint. And uh, this is probably going to be a combination of fabric and paint and collage. I don't know. Maybe paper. We'll see. <clears throat> I didn't start this with a specific plan in mind. You know, like... Here's what I want it to look like, and here are the things that I need, and here are the exact colors that I need to use, and here are the places that I need to put them, and this is how I need to arrange them, and then I need to fill... No. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm totally making this up as I go. I thought at first I would just paint it, you know, paint over it in the colors that would match this house, <clears throat> which I could do. But then I have the exact same canvas, just in different colors, and what fun is that? I keep looking at the camera like y'all can see me. <laughs> this is awkward. <clears throat> okay. Now, I wanted something different. And um, since it already has so much texture, the only way to do that really is just to put more texture on top. So then I thought fabric. Um, didn't have enough of the ones that I wanted, so I started painting some fabric. I'm going to put these on there kind of decoupage style. Um, let me get over here and show you what I'm using. Hang on. You notice it's not very windy today. This is good, but it's starting to warm up. Okay. Oh, I should have got a brush. Well, we'll see what we can do. Um, <clears throat> I've mixed up some glue. This is just Elmer's. Like this. I better make sure that I'm in frame. Is that part, can you see that? Oh, yeah, you can. Okay. This kind of Elmer's. And I've added some water to it so that it's about the consistency of heavy cream. Okay? I am going to need a brush. Let me pause right quick, go get a brush, and then we're going to start... Um, we're going to kind of arrange the fabric a little bit, see what it looks like, then we're going to start slapping it on. Okay, now I'm ready. Here's my fabric, which I have torn most of it into manageable size pieces, but some of the ones I did some more off camera and I left them big because I did these on camera and then put them out on the canvas, didn't have nearly enough. <laughs> Needed a lot more than I thought. So I made some more and left them bigger. 
But I think what I'm going to do is just put these big pieces down first um, with, you know, well-planned... Oh, no, now the wind picks up. No! Not yet. Okay. Yes, well-planned randomness. And then I'll start layering the smaller pieces over these bigger ones. How's that sound? I don't know. Makes sense to me. We will see. Um, the more I did of these, the more of these painted fabrics I made, the better they got. You know, that's just the way it is with everything. It just takes a while. There's always a learning curve. And uh, um, yesterday, a friend sent me a picture that she had taken at a um, rubber stamp convention where I was painting fabrics and we were making, oh, it wasn't at a convention, it was at my house. I had taken the pictures. Okay, wait. I'm going to have an actual correct memory here in just a minute. Yes. Jason took the pictures of me painting fabrics and making beads out of them. And I did that for um, Joan Messenger Dixon uh, for a company she used to have, and she was doing an online class, I think it was. And it was from painting fabrics for those beads that this technique came about. Um, when I was painting the fabrics, you know, and playing with them, I get impatient, you know, y'all probably know. And so I stuck them in the oven <laughs> to make them dry faster. And this is what happened when I did that. So this was one of those happy accident things. Um, and I'm sure somebody else somewhere has stumbled across the same technique because, you know, serendipity works that way. But that's where this was born. Okay. What do we think? Yeah? Uh-huh. I think so. Let's go for it. Now what do I do? <laughs> Okay, I guess I just put glue on there, right? I got me a big brush. And let's just put glue over and under. You know, decoupage style. Let's see what happens. This, uh, the surface of this canvas is kind of slick because it has other paint on it. And if I remember right, I used acrylic, I used latex, I used all kinds of stuff. So I'm not sure if I'm going to have a sticking problem because of that. Um, <clears throat> you know, a smarter person would have taken the time to gesso first, but you know, I want to get this done. I want results now. I don't want to do it right. I should get it done. <laughs> So let's just start slapping it down and see what happens. Maybe I can will it to stick. <laughs> it seems like it's, you know, I mean, it's, I think it'll work. And it's not like, you know, it's going to be under stress or anything. I mean, all it has to do is just stay put. If it's something where I lift a corner and I can peel it up, well, that's okay going to hang on my wall. Nobody's going to be touching it. As long as it stays put while it's left alone, then that's fine. I'm not going to put those edges down yet because that blue paint might not be quite dry. And I am putting these first ones down kind of flat. Maybe that's a mistake. Huh. Yeah, I think it is. Okay, let's start squinching from the get-go. I think that would be wiser. See, we're figuring out as we go. That's okay. We'll squinch a little bit. And then, as we add the top layers, we'll start squinching more. Can you see the shadow of my hair? How it's all sticking out? Yeah, it's bad. I haven't done a thing to it. I can feel 
my friend Diane going, no, stop, you're doing it wrong. She yells at my videos sometimes, which would actually be very helpful if I could hear her. Okay, I'm going to grow old and die trying to brush this stuff on, so let's just do this. I don't have the patience for that kind of, you know, roofer stuff. I'm swinging paint everywhere, but these tables are ones that I paint on, like that's their purpose, so that's fine. And then I'm going to use my pressure nozzle thing and hose down the patio real good when I'm done. going to make any judgments yet. We're just going to keep going and see what happens. We have a, another uh, gallon container of glue upstairs, which is good because it looks like I'm going to need it. And these do, I think I showed on the video the other day, you know, one side does turn out quite different than the other. So, I like to turn them to the side that I like, nice enough. I think once these start to dry and get a little sticky, then I may go around the edges and kind of uh, fix those a little bit. Okay. It's in my nature to want to. Um, you know, make these edges perfect and these should meet and everything should be covered and it should be just so, you know, that's what I'm screaming inside. So this um, randomness and, and collage type thing, it just does not come naturally for me. It's forced, very much so. But it can be done. If you're a very, you know, symmetrical type person, um, you can't force the randomness. It just takes some practice and a whole lot of willpower. I think this one is my favorite piece. I just love the way the colors turned out on that one. It's just practically perfect in every way. So see here I am being all analytical again and I'm pulling out Okay, now let's do all the oranges, and then I'm going to want to do all the blues. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm going to have to, have to be careful about that, or it's going to end up looking kind of funky. Okay. Oh, dear. Uh... You go there. And you go there. You there. This is the part that I hate because I'm getting kind of, you know, committed now.
Maybe I should let one layer dry before I do the next. What should I do, Diane? Yell louder. I'm not hearing you. I don't know. Maybe I should do the background before. Let's do that. Okay, this is what we're going to do. Oh, I've already wet these. They're going to dry. Well, not if I leave them in the glue. I could do that. Okay. I'm going to do... Um, kind of cover the back first, maybe, and then build on that. I think that would probably be smarter. Gosh, I'm almost already out of glue. Crazy. Before I get too much further, let me pause. Oh, I have nothing to wipe my hands on. Uh, okay, glue up another piece of fabric with them. I'm going to go mix up some more glue and then come back and just start layering some more. So, I'll be back. Try not to squinch too much on these bottom layers. We'll do the big squinching later. Or, I don't know, maybe I won't want to squinch big. Who knows? <laughs> this is really messy. You'll want to definitely do this outside. Uh, don't shower first. Don't even bother. Wear old clothes. I'm going to have to pressure wash my patio when I'm done. Hopefully, well, that will be worth it. Alright. I can't wait till these dry. I'm going to have to start layering over them. Well, they're getting nice and stiff. They're so totally not sticking to the back. But... I can fix that, I think. It is sticking a little bit, the areas that I'm actually leaving alone so it'll dry. I think it's going to be fine. these days I'm going to figure out how to do one of the live stream things. I think that would be fun and potentially disastrous. <laughs> but fun. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'm going to figure that out sometime. I don't know what Jason's going to say about this. I don't, you know, necessarily care, but... <laughs> It would be nice if he liked it, since it's going to hang on our wall, whether he wants it to or not. <laughs> but you know, he's really easygoing with that kind of thing. I just convince him that he doesn't understand art, and whatever I've created is absolutely beautiful, and that he should just trust me and go with it. <laughs> okay. That's all I got. Is it enough? Is it too much? Hard to tell. Okay, here's where we are. Our um, little fabric pieces have dried pretty much. I just went over them with a little bit more glue a minute ago, glue down some loose ends. And I like it, but it needs something. And I think what it needs is something cohesive because there's all of these different things happening, which I like very much. I like the busyness of it and all the colors, but um, it's got to have cohesion. Um, I'm not sure how to achieve that, but I'm going to try this. I mixed up some, this is some uh, metallic copper light glaze glaze on my fancy paint palette. I thinned it out with some more glaze, just an acrylic glazing medium, about one to one. 
fish just to make the glaze go further. And I'm going to use this kind of, um, I don't know if you can see this because it's metallic, you know, so you got to have the right light to see it. But almost just around the edges of the different pieces of fabric, my glaze is drying on my palette. Which kind of defeats the purpose of a glaze. Okay. Oh. I don't even know if you can tell, but you know what? That is definitely making me happier. Let me take the camera off of the tripod. And let's see if you can tell any difference at all. That was close. <laughs> Boy, it's a gar darn good thing I had hold of the strap. <laughs> Yikes. Okay. And I can't see in the viewfinder because it's so bright out here. But see, this is the glazed area, and this is the not glazed area. And I really do think it is helping. I don't know if that's the exact solution that I need, but it's definitely, I like it. So I'm going to keep at it with this. Um, just kind of, you know, put the glaze around the edges of each piece loosely, not to... Uh, not real fussy. And then we'll take another look at it. Okay. Um, I really like the copper glaze. Don't know if you can tell what it did, but I really, really like it. Now I'm going to very positively, uh, very lightly add in some blue glaze. This is the same blue I used around the edges and I mixed it with the glazing medium about one to one and I'm going to hit just some of these naked spots that are showing from underneath and then blend it out a little bit with another brush that's not the right brush this brush yeah someone had asked about the brushes these brushes these are old school stipple brushes from uh, back when I did a lot of rubber stamping. And some of them I got from Playbox rubber stamps. Some I got from Evolving Images. Some I don't know where they came from. But if you go to Amazon and you do a search for something like a um, rubber stamping stipple brush, these will come up. I think that Marvy still makes these, and a couple other manufacturers still make them. And they're just good for stippling and for texture and, you know, things like that. Okay, I'm going to um, let this dry really good so that maybe I can take it inside and get a good look at it. where I don't have to, you know, squint to keep the sun out of my eyes. Maybe I can actually see it better. And then I'll see what else it needs. I'm thinking it still needs something, but I don't know what. I don't really remember where I left off with our canvas, but I finished it and put it in my living room, family room. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> went to the store the other day and the toilet paper hasn't quite made it to where it goes, but <laughs> okay. Yeah, this is not a room tour. This is just a finished canvas uh, showing. And here's how it looks. It's way up there, so I'm trying to get as close as I can. I really love the way it turned out. Um, when it 
I got everything all glued down and it dried. I did sort of dry brush some really light kind of creamy beige color paint just on the uh, high spots, you know, because it's lumpy as it is. <laughs> it needed more depth. <laughs> so there we have it. And you can probably tell that, you know, that is a huge wall and it just kind of dwarfed that big canvas. So I'm probably going to make a couple of other somethings, don't know what yet, to put with it, but I'm not going to do that yet until we get new furniture because um, we are going to be getting new furniture, um, I don't know, maybe after Christmas. So um, yeah, until then, I'm good with this. So let's call this project done and the end.